Today's Brawl Star understands the element of surprise. Omnath, who has been printed multiple times each time gaining a new color, came back in M20 as Omnath, Locus of the Royal. And Omnath is our Brawl Star today. Look at this. Look at this little friend here. Omnath is an elemental tribal commander who enters the battlefield, deals damage to things equal to the number of elementals that you happen to control, and then has a little extra bonus where whenever a land enters your battlefield under your control, you get to put a plus one plus one counter on target elemental, does not have to be Omnath, and then if you control eight or more lands, you draw a card. So Omnath, very strong, but needs friends. So Omnath is surrounded by every elemental that's really it's really worth playing that's come out. I've actually been running this deck as a brawl deck since Omnath came out, but it works a lot better with the extra elementals that have come out recently, like Underworld Rangehound. Did you even know that that's an elemental? Well, now you do. There's also some cards in this deck that are not elementals, but work with elementals like Chandra. She deals damage to everything but elementals. Nissa, she makes elementals. Chandra, she buffs elementals. Chandra, she makes elementals. Yeah, you're, you're seeing there's a Nissa and Chandra here doing a lot of work. And of course the color combination here is Timur. So you've got blue, red, and green cards all causing trouble for you. Let's just hop right into the Brawl queue. Wish to select the deck. Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. Here we go. Brawler's Guild Hall. Brawl. Select. Cheeto Fingers! The name of the deck, by the way, is from Omnath's art. Omnath is the gamer elemental. He has Cheeto dust upon his fingers. That's the red mana. The green mana is the Mountain Dew gamer fuel. Potentially Baja Blast. And the blue is the gamer girl bathwater that flows beneath his feet. Each time Omnath shows up, he gains another color, so maybe he will end up with black next time. Maybe we'll have a four color Omnath. Wouldn't be surprised. And oh, I like this opening hand. Lines up for a turn two Leafkin, turn three Chromatic Lantern. Subscribe for me. Ah, oh, Lavakin Brawler. Get out of here. She's fun. But not fun enough. She's really good if you have some of the go wide elementals. I have some more big single elementals here. Oh no, my thoughts! They're being erased. They're being they're being removed directly from my brain. And thrown into the graveyard. Hey, you didn't take my elemental. They took Hydroid Crisis. Oh gosh, I can't read your name 15 int 5 whiz i can now tell what your name means you have high intelligence and low wisdom a fine trait for a wizard next turn we have a potential chromatic lantern to come down oh Hi there, Narset. I will not try to draw any cards while you're on the board. I'm going to forget about that and try to draw a card. Narset's passive is one of those things that's like, I'm acknowledging it. I see you, Narset, right now. I see Narset, and I'm going to forget about her while looking at her. Somehow my thoughts will be emptied simply by the presence of Narset. Leafkin Druid, all nice and sideways. We know that they have a runaway together because they're running Atrada, the Silencer. What does Atrada do? So typically an Atrada deck is one that plays Atrada, goes to exile creatures, and then bounces her back into hand in response to her exile trigger. The way that Atrada wins the game, by the way, is by exiling three different creatures that your opponent controls, which means attacking face three times while they have a creature that can be exiled that's not their commander. You can still exile their commander, but it does not count towards the three needed for Atrada. All right, there's a Golgari guild gate. And I'm just gonna go for Omnath. This looks like a counter spell. I'm just hoping it's not a counter spell. 
And I should have played Arcane Signet, I just realized that now. That I did not need this Leafkin mana here. Sweet! Omnath has rubbed his slimy Cheeto fingers all over Narset, and now she is dead. I got myself a little 3-3 three, three and an 0-3. Oh, hey there, Atrata. Welcome to the battlefield. Uh, I am going to try and be Trixie here. And I doubt it's going to work. They looked at my hand earlier, but they did not see this Collision Colossus. Oh, uh, you have you have run away together. I don't think you're gonna want to run away with Omnath though. Oh, I should have put the plus one plus one counter on Leaf Kindred and swung in with both. That would have been fun. If I can get them to use their run away together now though, I'll feel I'll feel good. Run away with me, my dear, my beautiful dear, you kick-ass looking vampire. Yes, they can run away in response to the Atrata trigger. So that is again what this deck oftentimes does, is it plays Atrata, attacks with Atrata, Atrata's trigger goes on the stack after damage is dealt, and instead of having her shuffled into the deck, which is actually her being put into the command zone, you bounce her into hand. And you can do that in... Uh, you can do that in standard, too. It's just hard to pull off. Here comes Atrata! I'm just going to let this Leafkin Druid happen. I could replay Omnath here. Dealing damage to face. I think that the Thrix after they use up Atrata would be better. I'm going to do that. Oh, I forgot about the Thought Erasure being drawn, though. It's going to be bad. They know everything in my hand. Thought Erasure! Um... Thrix can stay in my hand. Thrix gets thrown away. Goodbye, dear Thrix. Seeing a try to swing in, deal three damage to my face, and exile a Leafkin Druid. Goodbye, Leafkin Druid. But I've played two elementals in the same turn. Uh, I could have played these two elementals but not Thrix and anything else. I'm gonna start with Omnath. I know I'm dealing less damage here, but I suspected that a counter spell would happen. Go to the command zone. Here comes Thicket Crasher. And I can save this land for Omnath next turn, but I'm going to play it now because then I'll be at eight lands when I play my next land. While we wait for our opponent to play their big scary things, I want to say thank you to Game Chops for making the Poke and Chill playlist that's playing in the background right now. Some good listening for the background. And here comes Liliana, she who makes zombies. And I do have Trample here, so I'm able to get some damage through on Liliana. I'm also going to start with Omnath coming down. Also, right, just, just wiping those greasy fingers. We get to put a plus one plus one counter on the Thicket Crasher. And... Don't quite have enough mana to activate this. Oh no, I do! Excellent. May as well use up as much mana as I can. Liliana is not able to minus this turn. For anybody who wants to know another cool strategy for Atrata, there's the Castle Drawbridge, or Crashing Drawbridge, that's what it's called, which is an, an 
It's a artifact creature, which you can tap to give one of your creatures haste, or all of your creatures haste. And you can use that to haste out a Trotta the turn she enters a battlefield. That's the only colorless haste enabler that I can think of, though. Mmm. The Cavalier, eh? Let me just drop this bad boy down. And uh, I'm actually not going to discard and draw here because I want to play this. Because I get to draw a card. I'm going to beef up Omnath. Hey, there's a dog! Dog is good. Give everybody haste. Give everybody even more haste. And then I feel like I'm just going for face. So here comes the damage. Here comes the damage. I didn't even count how much damage this is. We have 8 plus 7, so that's 15. Plus all of it equals they die. I did the math. Totally. So there's Omnath. Let's take him right back into the queue. Let's get some more elementals going. I want to play Risen Reef in one of these games, because Risen Reef is just so fun to get to slay him down. Elemental Tribal loves Risen Reef. Sometimes the opponents don't do the math, sometimes I don't do the math. Combat lethal. Combat schmethal. Oh, my next opponent is running Corvold. He who sacrifices. I don't like that this hand is all 3 plus CMC. I'm gonna roll it and, ooh, I like this way more. Got Grumgully, who is not an elemental, but works nicely with elementals because they all happen to be non-human. It would be weird if we had a human elemental. It feels strange. Yeah, I don't like thinking about it. A land, it comes in tapped. Aha, a land, it comes in untapped and a Leafkin Druid. On turn two. I've got three mana here. Could go up to four and get down Omnath, but I don't think that's necessary. By the Temple of Epiphany. Have a good deep think. And think about Mu Yanling. He's in my thoughts. So dearly. Hobby Fanatic playing Woe Strider. Wolf Strider, I have a way to remove and, in fact, exile so it can't be brought back. That's that's going to be a good play for me. So I'm going to throw down this, make sure I'm holding up two blue. From Yan Ling. You're going to eat your goat. The goat has been consumed. Plus two. Nobody, nobody is removing their flying. There's no targets I want to hit. It's strange that you can target your own creatures with Mu Yanling. Next turn might be time for Corvold. Ooh, instead we're seeing Murderous Rider right here. Killing my poor Grumgully. Who would do such a cruel, cruel thing as killing Grumgully? Only a monster would do such a thing. Killing Grumgully. So I popped down Creeping Trailblazer here. I'm just trying to build up a bank of elementals for Omnath next turn. Corvold, though a 4-4 in the hand, is actually a 5-5. Once he enters the battlefield, because you sacrifice a permanent and he gets bigger. But ah, uh, there's no permanents to be sacrificed right now because it's Anax. And Assassin's Trophy. Oh, I already got my bird. I'm not mad about that. Give me the green mana, please. I would like to play Cavalier of Thorns. Thank you very much. I'm going to... I'm trying to decide here. I'm going to start with Omnath, but I'm going to manually tap here so it doesn't use up both these green sources, because now the Leaf Druid taps for two. I'm going to kill Anax. Goodbye, Anax. 
And I can use a creeping trailblazer now. A lot of damage. Got my opponent down to eight. Elemental Knights are all cool. The Cavalier Cycle from M20. They're very good cards. It's interesting to see that all of them are played despite having three of a color and their cost. And that's victory. Nice, two wins in a row with Omnath. I'm going to go for a third. Here we go. Hit them with those good, good elementals. I think the Cavalier I see played the least as Cavalier of Night. Uh, that's the one that enters the battlefield, allows you to sacrifice a creature to take out an opponent's creature. It's good, I just don't see it played as much. I think because most of the decks that are running black right now are very aggressive. With the exception being maybe a Sultai ramp deck. And that's not great. This is a good card to play on turn three. But I do want some ramp or something fast. That's something fast. Creeping Trailblazer. My little blaze it. If I want to play it, I need to start with something that generates a green mana. There we go. Creeping Trailblazer on the battlefield. Just a little tutu. And Hushbringer. Oh, that shuts down Omnath's ETB. So I might want to... Oh, I don't know. Destroy it. Hey, Aurelia. Gosh, but Aurelia is a way better target. As far as Enter the Battlefields go, Omnaths is not that important right here. So I'm okay with this. I also have the potential to ambush this in the turn in between. Oh, okay, so we just saw nothing get played, but two lands get sacrificed to make way for a lotus field. I'm gonna pop down the swift water, swift water cliffs. I'm going to throw Domri's ambush on my trailblazer, taking out Hushbringer. Now when Omnath enters the battlefield, he will get his his ETB. He will get to deal damage. I see Aurelia mana. I also see Collision mana. Fear my Wii 3-3. For it is so powerful. There goes Aurelia on the battlefield. Giving herself nothing. I think they're just trying to speed it up. And I'm going to kill her. I'm not even going to wait. I could have attacked in there, saw if they blocked and played Omnath to kill her, if they did block. This seemed like a easier way to guarantee her death. Grape and Trailblazer. Gets a bigger buff depending on the number of elementals I control. Currently I only control one. Ooh, and there's a way for them to make use of their extra mana. Fires of Invention will allow them to play Aurelia and only pay the two mana for her extra cost there. I don't want them exiling my creature though, so I'm going to take out Hanged Executioner and then swing in with Creeping Trailblazer. Oh, but they won't be able to play Aurelia until they play another land, which they did. So now they get Aurelia for free and they pay the two extra costs from her dying. Here she comes. Hello, Aurelia. If I get one more land, Chandra might come out next turn. Hey there, Ajani. Strength of the Pride. This is the life gain, Ajani. The one that makes Ajani's Pride Mate tokens. You gonna give this little spirit vigilance? Oh, little three one. She is just a three one. Hmm. I would.
would like I would like sideways Aurelia. Aurelia, become this way. I should probably go for little Johnny. The reason why I wanted to tap down Aurelia there is in part because she has well, she could give herself vigilance, but also because she has Mentor. And if she swung in there, she'd be able to make one of those creatures stronger. Oh, Sarkhan the Masterless. And Krenko? I'm not sure what the theme is of the stack. Uh, Aurelia does work nicely with Krenko because you Mentor to get a bigger Krenko to get more goblins. I guess Sarkhan's just in here because he's good. It's true. He is good. Okay, Paradise Druid. Uh, I'm just going to start this out with Cloudkins here and try and draw a land. How is that still not a land? Deck, why are you like this? Deck, please. I'm going to throw... All three of you at Sarkhan. Because I really don't like him here. Bye, Creeping Trailblazer. Here comes Paradise Druid. They could also just use Aurelia's uh, ability directly on Cranko to give him plus two plus zero oh until end of turn. Ooh, Chandra! Chandra finds lands. Chandra plays lands. Chandra's really good card advantage when you have Fires Up Invention down. Okay, so this is Resurgence. Resurgence is going to give first strike and vigilance and then give a second combat phase, which with Krenko and Aurelia able to buff twice is actually terrifying. And I don't feel I have a good way to deal with this. So as they enter another combat phase, Aurelia is going to do her thing again. By the way, this ability, Resurgence, is a lot like Aurelia the War Leader, the previous Aurelia that got printed abilities. Gee, that's a really good turn for them. It's just eight goblins! It's fine, it's just eight goblins. Mm-hmm. This is fine. I mean, I'm dead, but at least I get to kill the goblins first. I did it. I got my opponent down to nine. I do like your Aurelia deck though, Gravity Joe. And what last moves will you make? Oh, chance for glory. You don't even have to win this turn if you don't want to. You can just chill, you know. Got some indestructible creatures. You, you can win next turn. It's fine. You can win next turn. Also, ouch! GG, Gravity Joe, and thank you to everybody who watched this video. Again, I'm Amy the Amazonian, and you can always catch me live with these Brawl decks at twitch.tv slash Amazonian. I hope to see you next time for the next Brawl Star.